Hey golfers, and welcome to episode two of Second Swing Thoughts. Uh, I'm Drew Mahold, joined today by Michael Geiger. Um, if you've been following the YouTube channel, you know who Michael is. He's been on several times testing and swinging clubs. Uh, he's also interviewed a lot of the handmade sticks craftsmen as well on the YouTube channel. And so we'll talk a lot about that today, diving into handmade sticks and um, really the, the story behind that. So um, we're happy to have Michael join us today. But uh, first I wanted to talk to you guys about the Second Swing Tour brand fittings. Uh, now we're kind of into April, nearly into May here. Uh, well, the weather hasn't really cooperated with us here in Minnesota, but uh, nonetheless, it's, golf time is almost here or depending on where you live, it already is here. So getting fit for your equipment uh, is of the utmost priority if you wanna drop your scores. Um, playing better golf does not have to come from hours and hours of practice. Optimized equipment can be all you need to shoot lower scores. At Second Swing, our award-winning master fitters use state-of-the-art technology and world-class training and knowledge to dial in golfers every day. Whether you're a beginner, season pro, or anything in between, you will save strokes with a Second Swing Tour Van fitting. So schedule that fitting today at secondswing.com. Michael, um, this is an exciting time of year. Uh, well, it's about to be. It was for like, what was it, last week or two weeks ago when it got warm, we got to play around a golf, and then here anyway in Minnesota, it got really cold. So now we're kind of, it's we're the, back the excitement and anticipation is back to where we are. It is. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm very excited. You know, you know, long time listener, first time caller. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be with you on the show. Um, I sit next to you here in the office. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a pleasure to be mm -hmm. next to you once again. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of discussions there. Always had uh, lots of banter, if you will. Um, but I think, um, you know, I have a couple of rapid fire questions to maybe get started here. Uh, just a little bit of uh, a way for the listeners and the viewers to kind of get the get an inside look at who Michael Geiger is. Careful what you wish for. Uh, so these are kind of off the wall, maybe a little uh, uh, random, but they're all mostly golf related here. So um, number one, your dream foursome. You get to go play a foursome. You pick three players, or three people in the world. Who are you gonna pick? Is this living, dead, anything? Yeah, go for uh, it. If it's truly a dream, I would go my dad. Winston Churchill and Mark Twain oh, would be my dream. Person. I love that. I love yeah. that. That'd be some good conversation. Hopefully. I would think. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Uh, all right. So now switching gears kind of a lot here, but in your clubs in your bag right now, do you have a favorite? I, it's got to be the, the disco stick, the Titleist TSI three driver, okay. um, eight degrees aloft. Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably the straightest club in my bag. Uh, I, I love it. Got it course at second swing so um hasn't yeah. uh, hasn't steered me wrong yet no and uh we're we know so well how the titleist drivers perform and um no surprise and i know your tendency is a little bit having you know swung some with you and tested some with you in the bays and stuff and so i imagine an eight degree tsi3 is probably a good fit for you knowing that it probably dropped your spin enough for you it, it takes a lot to drop my spin but so far <laughs> so good yeah uh all right here's a good one now we just had uh, the Masters tournament uh, a couple week, couple weeks ago now, so uh, lot, there's a lot of talk about Scotty Scheffler's choice yeah. uh, for for his dinner, and maybe some uh, not very adventurous choices. I think was maybe a criticism, if you want to call it criticism, out there. So I have to know what you would pick if you were able to choose a champion's dinner menu. Yeah, I always enjoy that because I, I think it's really fun when you guys like Hideki and they choose some sort oh, yeah. of like Wagyu beef or there's kind of some exotic mm -hmm. choice. Um, yeah. Sadly, I come from rural Minnesota, so uh, mine would be very Scotty-esque. It would probably be, you know, um, some surf and turf, steak and lobster, okay. maybe the steak served Oscar style, get a Ooh, little crab meat on the okay. top, yeah. maybe some broccoli, some fries, pretty, pretty down the middle, hearty cool. American food. That sounds a little bit more... Uh, adventurous than Scotty's though. I mean, he, he just true. had the sliders, you know, so that was kind of the big thing, but um, that people kind of jumped onto and latched onto was the cheeseburgers. But at the end of the day, I think there was a Scotty style to them too that he had mentioned. So yeah, uh, there's, you know, at least he had that going for him, right? He got yeah. A little bit creative in that. Element. I guess it'll be, yeah, steak served Michael style. So yeah. Steak served Michael style. Like, um, so next one here. Now, I don't know if you, first of all, have you made an ace or an albatross? Either one? I've made two aces, both on par three courses. So I never, I never know what to say. It it, it's like it's. I feel like it's almost like two half aces that you round up to one, but it's <laughs> that, 
it, I think it qualifies. It feels, you've been at least one ace. I'll it, give you that. It feels gross. The first one was in competition when I was 12. So I, I okay. sort that, of count that one. That would be like disrespectful to not count it, I feel like. But yeah, I don't so, know. I never know what to say when well, I hear that question. You've made. I'm going to give you one sure. eight for sure. Probably two. Uh, I think we'll have to maybe see if the comments uh, say anything about the the legality sure. of those yeah. aces. But uh, here's one. So you never made an albatross. Then uh, let's say you have between your 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 next round. Would you rather make an ace or an albatross? I would rather make an ace. Yeah. And I don't think it's all that close. I think two main reasons. I think one. I think you just showcased, you asked if I had made an ace first. I think that's, that's true. No one really asks if you yeah. ever made an albatross, uh, although it's obviously really cool. And second, I think there's something really fun about the hole in one because everyone's on the tee box with you. Mm -hmm. There's sort of a celebration. It, and when you're in an albatross, everyone's spread out. It's kind of just, right. did anyone else see that when it's, a, when it's an ace? It's, um, there's kind of a built in celebration built in so that's that's pretty cool right i guess i didn't think about that part like you might be especially i mean obviously when we talk albatross we're talking probably a two on a par five because there's right you know you could in theory make a one on a par four uh but the more likely one probably is the par five um but you're right people your your group's probably scattered you got one guy in the trees you know you're probably in the fairway you know mm -hmm. so it makes that celebration aspect a little easier um i like that though uh, obviously on the scorecard the albatross is probably a little more valuable and probably a little cheaper in the pro in the uh at the bar afterwards too, i so. would think yeah that's <laughs> now that you know not when you put it that way yeah <laughs> now you're rethinking <laughs> yeah exactly um lastly here and this is kind of this is going to bridge into the conversation the the meat of the conversation today so uh you've been kind of managing the, the 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 handmade sticks brand hms mm -hmm. we're calling it here um within the company but handmade sticks out there is sort of the uh the public brand that uh, a lot of golfers have become aware of in the last year two years now so um, within that, the coolest connection that you've made um, now kind of being involved with Handmade Sticks here at Second Swing? Well, there's a lot of connections. One of the cool things about Handmade Sticks is, uh, for those who don't know, it's, it's really connecting the Second Swing company with a lot of boutique club makers around the country, sort of, kind of one-man shops that are, you know, although they're, you know, they don't quite have the resources or the brand name as, as some of the bigger putter makers, they make fantastic equipment. Uh, real one-of-a-kind stuff. Uh, in terms of the connections, I think probably the biggest one is is with Larry Bobka, mm -hmm. who um, works at Second Swing and has really been uh, kind of my running buddy on the project. And um, we've become friends. It's been it's always great to, uh, as you know, yeah. um, you know, he's like a jukebox. You just kind of press E4 and you get a great story <laughs> about Greg Norman or Steve Elkington. And, yeah. and so um, kind of building a relationship with him has been fantastic and a real honor. Um, but so many of the, the Handmade Sticks crafts are really not only terrific people, but I'm, I'm always blown away by their passion for golf. I think sometimes you think about people who are in the business of golf, yeah. and after 10, 20 years of, of kind of the, the grind of the business, you, they might lose some of that passion for the, for the sport, but it's, it's still there. You talk to David Frisch at Goodwood, Lamont Mann at Man Crafted, Todd Dempsey, Tad Moore, these, these are guys that have been in the business for as many as, in Tad Moore's case, since the Kennedy administration, <laughs> and their love for golf is still incredibly evident. And so that's that's really been one of the coolest parts about working on the HMS project. Yeah, I think, and I've gotten to know uh, a couple of them at least, um, and you know, JP Harrington being one mm -hmm. that we've actually worked with a couple times on videos on the YouTube channel as well. So, and you're right, that passion just for no, the passion to craft something cool is always there, but then it's also, it's not just that, it's what it means for the golfer, whether it is, because in a lot of cases, some of these things are collectible items that people don't really even go to the golf course with. Right. Or sometimes they are thrown in the bag and used on the course. And the utility of, I think, both of those avenues, I think is interesting with all the craftsmen, because I think, and I think you may, maybe would, unless I'm wrong, but a lot of the the stuff that's built or made for you know handmade sticks can go both ways there where the collector can put it you know frame it and put it on the wall or um display it you know at, in a maybe a workshop or something like that or you can put it in your bag and they're functional really you know good performing clubs too right now if you ask larry bobka about this his saying is always tools not jewels and so really the the, the first and foremost with with handmade sticks products we want them to be functional and, and, mm -hmm. and top performing and excellent feeling. But you're absolutely right. And you're hitting on really kind of a key tenet. I think that's so interesting about HMS is that I really feel like, and especially I would say with putters specifically in golf, it's really the 
the biggest meeting of art and science um, in the game. There's you look at some of these putters. You know, you look at a, a Lee Embrace putter, and it rolls fantastically. It's 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 a top flight putter, but there's something so you almost feel bad hitting it. You almost want to put it on your wall, but uh, you know the idea is that while they look beautiful, they're they're too good not to put right. in the bag. Right, and I've gotten to see firsthand some of these these designs in this art that you mentioned um, and they're they're really cool stuff and there's there's you know there's a few of these craftsmen that go kind of classic and there's a lot of these shapes that you've probably seen before but they've kind of put their own spin on it exactly and then there's also some new ideas um, with a whole new design that you've really never seen before and so to see both of those things come together in this whole project is, is has been has been really cool so um, I wanted to ask because you, you alluded to it at the beginning a little bit but like the creation and sort of the, the beginning of this where did it really come from was larry kind of in on it from the very beginning was it his idea or how did this whole all work out and, and how did hate you know handmade sticks really become what it is so i think the genesis of the idea really came from second swing as as its name suggests really the bread and butter is is in the used space um and one of our really core tenets in the company is best in class selection mm -hmm. And so, you know, to the golfer, they look on our website, they see we have over 100,000 clubs in stock. And so one of the big parts of our company has been and always will be, you know, I'm looking for, a, you know, maybe a decently priced G410 ping driver. You know what, Second Swing is the place to go. What's nice is, obviously, we also do quite a bit of new business. So if you want to get fit for the, you know, the, the latest and greatest from TaylorMade, you can also do that. So we've kind of hit the used and the new and what HMS allows us to do is it allows us to kind of access that that kind of extra top flight where it's there's a lot of great, you know, Scotty Cameron, Bettinardi, these are amazing mm -hmm. brands, but there's a lot of golfers out there that want something even more unique, even more one of a kind. And that's maybe they want a, a man crafted one of a kind MA66 that is, you know, stamped just the way they want it. It has a unique finish based on their one-on-one -on -one dialogue with Lamont Man himself. There's there's a certain level of service that you can get through a lot of these HMS craftsmen, and uh, really a level of uniqueness that mm -hmm. uh, HMS brings to uh, golf consumers. Yeah, I think that's because we're now when a lot of these individuals that are intrigued by the handmade sticks uh, products are, like you mentioned, they have to be just really hardcore into the game. Whether that's they play a ton. Or maybe they're, you know, historians of the game. They're really they know who these craftsmen are from their, I guess, quote unquote. I want to say prime of their career, but mm -hmm. you know, maybe when they were, you know, building for a different company or they were building for major champions, and some of them still are. Um, but you know, there's the historians or the really hardcore golfers that seem to gravitate towards um, these products. And so, you think is it, is, it, is it really just like the novelty of these items that seems to grab their attention? or on top of kind of just obviously the, the craftsman itself? I think these are just, yeah, it's a mixture of a lot of that. It's, these are just really cool products. They're, they're really one of a kind. I think we're not trying to, you know, the goal behind HMS has never been to, you know, move a bunch of product and, mm -hmm. and really, you know, hit a certain margin. It's, it's not really a dollars and cents thing. It's, it's really just, hey, each month, here's some, some really cool putters, here's some cool wedges, here's some, you know, maybe some persimmon woods. It's really just a way for Second Swing to reach out to that that diehard golf customer that you were talking about and say, "Hey, check this out." You know, maybe it's 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 absolutely not for everyone, and and that's fine. It's just uh, it's just one more kind of arrow in the quiver of Second Swing. Yeah, and I think the cool part too is it does, like you mentioned, um, you know, some of these craftsmen don't necessarily have the reach, maybe that we've kind of generated here at Second Swing, and so. With this, we're able to provide some of that reach to them where, you know, every, you know, the first, you know, Tuesday of the month or whatever the time is now that you guys kind of drop a new uh, release for Handmade Sticks, you know, these craftsmen get um, all that kind of pub, right? And and we get to blast it out to all the golfers that, you know, we've added to to our, you know, customers, right? And so they come become aware of it and suddenly it's, well, I got a putter, uh, maybe I want a wedge now from Handmade Sticks or, you know, all these things that come together. So. Um, I think it's it's kind of like you mentioned, it's that third sort of leg of um, like there's, you know, you have the used, you have the new, and then you have this extra element that is really the top of the pyramid, like mm -hmm. the really 
avid, avid golfers that are historians and they're really dedicated to the game. And they're also just basically golf nerds, which is what everybody here at Second Swing is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, selfishly, a lot of HMS is, is you know, I see the, the kind of the appeal of it and I see kind of the customer because uh, I see that customer just about every day in the, in the mirror. Yeah. Um, so like you said, um, if we can reach out to the, the diehard golfers out there and, and make Second Swing uh, kind of home for them, then, uh, then we're thrilled with what we've done. So let's kind of go through some of the, I guess, the coolest items individually that have been created, I guess. You know, I, I think back in terms of visually, the, the JP wedges are always, they jump out to me, just the colors and that, that kind of unique sort of badge on the back of the wedge always mm -hmm. catches my attention. So, uh, but obviously there's a, a plethora of other things that have been created by some of these craftsmen. So um, if you can, uh, again, that's probably maybe a tall task to have sure. you narrow, narrow it down to one cool item, but just some of the highlights in terms of items that have been made for Second Sweet Handmade Sticks. Sure, if I were to name a couple, I think uh, one really cool story was Todd Dempsey makes really fantastic persimmon woods, and uh, he yeah, was in the news right. recently mm -hmm. um, gaming his equipment out in professional events and, and playing well. Uh, that, was, that was a really cool story and just shows, you know, like I said, these are, these are tools, although you know, they have many jewel-like qualities. First and foremost, you can game these um, at, at the top levels of golf, and so that was a really cool story, I think. Recently, one of the most... Um, one of the newer additions to Handmade Sticks has been Clay Long, who designed uh, the putter that Jack Nicklaus used to win the 1986 Masters, created a sort of a inspired by sequel to that putter for, for Handmade Sticks. Um, that was really cool to see that project um, kind of from soup to nuts kind of come to fruition and, and come to fruition for Second Swing. That's been, that's been very cool. Um, you have to mention, I mean, the JP wedges are yeah. really some of the most striking golf products out there. It's uh, like you, that, the first reaction I had when I saw them was like, well, what are those? Like you almost, yeah. you kind of, you know, you're scrolling, you just, you have to stop and say, mm -hmm. I need to, I need to know he more definitely, about this. He checked that box in terms of the, the unique appearance, right? Um, and then, but like you put it down in a dress and you don't, it's nothing crazy. It doesn't look that different. Yeah. But then you just see it from the other angle and it's, and you know, there's something distinct about this compared to other wedges out there. And I know that's what his goal was, was to make something, you know, it's different aesthetically and, and also the performance is different in a good way. So he's, I, I, I like what JP's approach has been. And again, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm talking with him because I've, or about him because I've worked with him mm -hmm. on videos before. So I've got the most exposure to him. Obviously you have worked with all these other craftsmen as well, but, um, I think it's it is cool just to see all the the new stuff, and then you know I learn about the you know what's the new drop, and I kind of read about the, the the history and the story a little bit behind a you know this model or this model from Weston Mon or Goodwood or whatever it might be. So there is a really cool long kind of list of uh, a stable, if you will, of really really unique craftsmen that have been at the top of of the golf world with building clubs. Yeah, we're we're super thrilled with with what we've uh, kind of the crew that we've we've put together um with hms and um yeah we we uh we can't wait to see what comes next in uh, 2023 and beyond i think at, at that todd dempsey playing those and was that some i can't remember was it a qualifier or was it a i think q it was school a q something? school a yeah. champions q school maybe i think that's right gosh and he i mean he was like in it like he was in contention for a card for a while there for a while um, and with i mean i i remember there was some you know, blogs written and like, what what is he doing playing persimmon woods? But hey, if he likes what he likes and he builds what he likes, I think he had a three and a five wood yeah. as a persimmon. Um, you know, <laughs> with guys that hit their three wood, they carry right. it three hundred plus, and he was yeah. in the persimmon three wood and and uh, yeah, hanging in there. Jeez, and we, to to at some level, he's you got to be able to to hit the ball in the center of the face on a persimmon wood compared to something today, but he's able to do that. And it fits exactly what he needs for his bag. So that's, you, you won't see that anywhere else. That's where you're, you're going to find that with handmade sticks and not really anywhere else in golf right now. Probably not. <laughs> um, moving on to sort of, because I, I wanted to mention the, I mentioned the long list of, of craftsmen, right? And you can actually find that list sort, sort of down at the Scottsdale store on that wall back where Lamont Mann has his own build shop. And so, um, when I first went down to the store down there, that was the coolest thing for me was, you know, you, you walk in the store, it's obviously a huge, gigantic store. And I think the, 
any level of golfer is going to kind of there's going to be that wow factor. Mm -hmm. But then I think for these individuals interested in handmade sticks products like the the, the diehards, the the historians of the game, I think what's going to be even more of a wow is going to be the build shop in the back with the handmade sticks logo above it, all these the the names of all these craftsmen, and then Lamont Man himself building putters that have been you know that have been requested. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just he's grinding away back there building putters um you know you see the flames and the smoke and he's got his gloves on and whatever like i mean it, it's it's been awesome to see that and you know you get you, you watch customers go in and kind of take a peek and see what they're doing so um i guess the what was the process like of getting him you know a, a build shop in there um because you don't hear a lot of um i mean i, I don't think that's ever been a thing in a retail store with a and sort of an outside type of builder that's as storied as he is sure. to come in and build in a store like that. Well, in terms of the actual kind of logistics, uh, the process was really, it was really fortunate timing, just as kind of the plans for this new store were, were coming together. Uh, we had this relationship with Lamont Mann. He had a kind of his workshop nearby in Scottsdale was, he, he had outgrown it and he was, he was ready for some new digs. And so there, it was really a kind of a perfect marriage. We brought him in and uh, it's known as Lamont's Garage down in our Scottsdale store. And it's really, I think it's really phenomenal for two main reasons. I think the first is when you think about, you know, buying a golf club online, you kind of put through your specs, you, you kind of click check out and you kind of imagine this sort of, you know, large factory kind of churning out your product and then getting packaged and sent to you. I think what Lamont's Garage showcases is something that a lot of people forget, which is that these products are being, these are the fruits of someone's labor. This is someone, when you go to Lamont's Garage, you'll see someone actually creating your putter by, you know, with his hands. It's, it's you know, it's really where obviously the, the name Handmade Sticks came from is that this is truly, these, these products are the result of someone, you know, tweaking and, and crafting and forging and, and finishing uh, with their own skill and technical mastery. And I think that's one of the really cool things about Le Mans Garage is that you get to see that on display. And then the second cool thing about Le Mans Garage is, like you said, just Lamont himself. He's yeah. just a fantastic guy. You talked about the connections we've made through Handmade Sticks. Um, speaking of Lamont is, is a very, it, it's always enjoyable. He's, he's a terrific guy. Uh, he loves speaking with customers. And um, I'm just so, so proud to be a part of, of kind of what he's, his vision um, for what Mancraft it should be. Uh, he sources every everything, every mancrafted item, putter, shaft, head cover, uh, is sourced in the United States. He's um, a really passionate, talented guy, and uh, we couldn't be prouder to be a part of uh, yeah. mancrafted. I think that's you, you spoke about the being able to watch. Like, there's a lot of customers in Scottsdale that literally have watched their putter be it, you know, being made. In that you know through the window they're watching they you know lamont's got the glasses on and he's got the sparks flying or whatever else it might be and that's their putter being made you know tooth and nail by lamont man which is the coolest thing because uh, you with every other club you know you might you go into store and watch your club get its loft checked or your or the lie tweaked mm -hmm. whatever it might be but from the ground up essentially watch lamont man build the putter that's specifically for you and in pretty much every case, it's not replicated for anybody else. There's usually the right. specs or the design or the stamping or whatever else you're requesting on it. So um, that is just it's, it's a, a cool touch. And if you're in the Scottsdale area and you happen to be down there, you live down there or whatever, and you haven't checked it out, you have to go check it out. And I think it's a good reminder that, you know, the, the Mons Garage is a very good kind of obvious visual representation, but it's the same thing for mm -hmm. when yeah. you buy a Goodwood putter. David Frisch is doing the exact same thing. When you buy a Weston Mon putter, he's doing the same thing. These these craftsmen, although with in the Scottsdale store you'll get to see in action, that same process is is go, is taking place obviously behind closed doors. But when you buy an HMS product, um, this isn't you know a factory production. This is a, a very right. talented craftsman um, really doing what they do right. best, and they care about making sure it's it's perfectly done for for you so sure that's i think the the coolest part about it is yeah because you mentioned you know you think of going to a a big manufacturer big brand and you probably don't get that level of detail and, and personal kind of um you know effort or uh, investment into it like you do with these with these with these clubs so that's i mean and, and i kind of wanted to ask too because you mentioned head covers um 
and I know your H handmade sticks is also added, not just club, but there's, you know, there's head covers, there's bags. So, uh, talk to me about that and kind of adding those elements into this. Cause that was that a, in the plan right away. And if it wasn't, how did it, how did it get added? I guess, you know, the head cover thing was, it was just, uh, like a lot of handmade sticks things. It's, it's a fun, just sort of aspect of the business. We know that that, that active avid customer, um, loves their accessories. They love their head covers, their, uh, you know, special ball markers, divot repairs. And so, you know, through different companies, PRG, Ace of Clubs, Sunfish, um, we try to obviously keep that same kind of standard of quality that I think people expect from a, a Handmade Sticks product. But uh, yeah, we like to we like to swim in the, in the head cover waters from time yeah. to time. Well, I think, yeah, and you're, I mean, if you go to your local club and you checking the bags of your avid players that are out there multiple times a week, you're going to see some, some unique head covers in that bag. Absolutely. It might be the driver, it could be the putter, it could be, but you're going to see something unique. And so uh, it, may, it was kind of a, a, an easy decision, I imagine, for, for you and for Larry to kind of dive into that as an, as an addition when some of these places maybe brought it up or you guys started working with these other, other companies on that. Absolutely. So Lee Embrace, is that saying it right? Yes. Lee Embrace. It's cool because the Embrace Putters is the name. Um, but Embrace Putters uh, is the new addition for mm -hmm. Handmade Sticks, the most recent addition. So talk to me about adding Embrace Putters and what Liam really brings uh, to the table. So first off, Liam, uh, fantastic putter maker, sort of, um, you know, uh, man crafted was uh, Lamont Man was sort of his mentor, um, really coached him up about kind of a lot of different aspects of, of club making and putter making. Uh, he's a fantastic player. He played for Grand Canyon University Division One mm. golf. Uh, comes from England, so um, brings some uh, a unique accent there we to go. the handmade stick stable, uh, which is always appreciated. So it, it's really it was like you know like a lot of these craftsmen, it was a perfect fit. He's a very passionate, talented individual um, who who loves making great putters, and uh, to uh, add him to the team was really a no brainer. Right and. So now, I guess in terms of the the, in the overall process, first of all, like, is there, you know, is there prospects that you're going after, or I mean, what's like the discussion that maybe you and Larry have on like adding a craftsman to the to the group here? Because there is so many out there that are doing this, but then there, there's also the because you have to understand, um, and you know, when you're adding a, a member to the the list of craftsmen for handmade sticks, it's got to make sure it's the right fit there. They have their own process and they they build these putters or they build these wedges whatever the club might be but they do it kind of in a similar fashion where they pay attention to the detail it's really really good product mm -hmm. um and they deliver it in that kind of personal with that personal touch that these other craftsmen have done yeah you know there's no there's no secret black box checklist yeah. uh you know secret application process it's just sort of a lot of the things you mentioned it's um we have a conversation we you know we is the product at a high level? Um, is the craftsman um, kind of fit within kind of what what Second Swing is trying to promote with this brand? And well, you know, while I'd say you're right, we don't we're not trying to um, add too many people and and kind of blow it up and and make it a huge thing. We're also you know not afraid to. Um, it's not supposed. It's not meant to be incredibly exclusive or hierarchical. It's just uh, when, when we see a craftsman who's who's making some great stuff, we want to we want to be a part of it. Yeah, and I think so. The, the the so we've talked about in house. We really have. I mean, have Lamont in in Scottsdale, but then like, I think the other cool part too. We haven't really talked much about it, and we're actually working with Larry to try to get him on the the, the podcast here soon. But Larry building his own stuff um, yeah. as part of this was that always the plan was to have him build his own product with this, or was that kind of he realized, hey, I actually have some ideas and I have the capabilities of making them, so why not just add it to Handmade Sticks? I, I think. He was always deep down going to, to produce some stuff. I think um, our our CEO, Simon Kala, uh, hazing him and, and badgering <laughs> him into doing it repeatedly helped uh, yeah. expedite the process. But no, Larry is, is one of the most talented club makers on the planet. And uh, he's done some putters for us and some wedges. And then, of course, the, uh, the LB1 irons. Um, have been really the first handmade sticks branded product and have been a, a real success story for us. And so I, I think, you know, club making is in Larry's bones. I think yeah. he was always going to end up uh, doing it for us. But uh, 
I was I was thrilled that when he decided right. to do it and, and thrilled that the uh, kind of golf community responded the way they did. Right. And I, I like, too, that he's always he's with the putter, um, with the irons and, you know, wedges like he's he's always he's building it. He's building what he wants. And not that that's not what others are doing here, but he's going to build something that is exactly what his vision of it is. And now we've seen it come to life with all these things. So I don't know if he's got more coming, but uh, he's got he's done pretty well so far stay tuned there's there's stay tuned. there's some more stuff coming yeah. but you're, you're very you're really right about that that last point because when you talk to larry he's very passionate about and i think a lot of the hms craftsmen are the same way when he puts his name on something that that means a lot it's you know it's the same way um you know van gogh or monet when they sign a painting it it, it, they, it means something and mm -hmm. so um he's not casual about putting his name on a product so when you see it there um, there's a there's a standard that um, is going to be met. So for the listeners and viewers that maybe want to learn more or maybe want to uh, take in what's next, right? They want to be you know they want to be ready for that mm -hmm. new launch. So uh, tell them maybe you know what they should look for, when they should look for it, um, moving forward in 2023. And I mean, if you got any other. Uh, Anything up the sleeve yet for Handmade Sticks this year? Also, that would be the time. But um, I think, because there, like we said, like we said, this has been it has really captured a lot of the the attention of a lot of those avid avid players that have a, an affinity for the history of the game and an affinity for equipment as well. And so, uh, if if there's maybe a new uh, intrigued golfer listening or watching, mm -hmm. where should they go? How do they learn more? How do they get the next drop? Sure. So uh, there's a Handmade Sticks page on the secondswing.com website. Uh, the first full week of every month is when we do our kind of monthly drop. The best way and the quickest way to see these products is to subscribe to the Second Swing mailing list. Um, that, that will be dropped in your email and you'll get, um, you'll be informed immediately once these products uh, kind of drop live on the website. Uh, Handmade Sticks on Instagram is another great way. But uh, really, yeah, kind of the first week of every month, and then um, if you get the second swing email, you're gonna you're gonna get a pretty good sneak peek at, at what we have up our sleeve. And then in terms of kind of products later in 2023, the uh, you know kind of on the on the back of the uh, LB1 iron success, um, there's rumors of potentially some some wedges and putters coming down the Ooh, pike. So um, rumors, stay tuned. Rumors. Yeah, I can't confirm or deny ah, anything, but okay. stay tuned. Very nice, very nice. Well. Uh, that was really cool, and um, I know we're all at Second Swing very excited about what Handmade Sticks has become, what it is, and what it's going to continue to become uh, throughout the rest of this year and in the future. So, uh, Michael, thank you for joining. Um, this has been really cool, and you know we're only going to do some more stuff with this because obviously, if we can get Larry in here and he'll have some stories, I'm sure, and he'll be able Just to pull tell the his... string yeah, and yeah, let him go. Yeah, yeah. As you said, the jukebox. I mean, it's so true with him. You. You could say a golfer, a, a, a big name golfer, pre 2010 probably, and uh, he's got a story about working with that player probably. So, right. Um, but Michael, thank you for joining. Uh, it's great stuff here, and, and golfers once again, everything he said about you know getting the email list, visiting the website, all that stuff, way more information, and you'll get the handmade stick product that you need. So, thank you, Michael, and uh, stay tuned for episode three of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. <laughs>